You have to be a professional. You have to have thick skin to play in Philly. No matter what sport you play. I mean, that's just facts. Philly run players out of town. Period. So we hear, right, that Howie and Nick will be talking tomorrow. (laughs) I've seen this question. If you could ask Holly and Nick one question in a press conference tomorrow, Ooh. what would you ask them? And I want everybody in the chat to tell me, what would you ask these two idiots? No, <laughs> these two special people tomorrow in a press conference. So you want me to go first? You can go first. All right. So, Howie, my question to you is, how involved were you in making Nick Sirianni change a defensive coordinator before the Seahawks game? Because I think our defense was way better with Sean Desire <laughs> than <laughs> Matt Patricia. And that's not saying a lot, but we was bending, but we wasn't breaking like this. I mean, we became one of the worst from the Seahawks game on. Did you make Nick Sariani change defensive coordinators midway through the season? So I want to hear that answer from Howie. So you could play Howie, Bird Gang. Go ahead, Howie. Answer my question. Well, you know, you know, all of us come together as one. Hey, as put that unit. down, man. Hey, put that stuff down, man. Because I'm going to see Howie. Look at me, Howie, when he talks to me. All of us come together as a unit. And, you know, we talk about this. You know, we look at the pluses, the minuses. You know, it was good that we had a guy in Patricia that was there. You know, you know, he was there to, you know, to oversee our decisions. And at the moment, we thought this was the best thing for the team was, you know, and it wasn't a firing. We didn't fire Desai. We we appreciate everything inside does for us. You know, he we appreciate him the 10-1 and one record he gave us before he got where we got, you know. And we didn't really demote him. We just put him in the box so he could see the game at a different angle. And at the same time, we could utilize the other asset and Patricia that we had to help this football team move forward. Well, Howie, uh, I know that you wasn't watching the Eagles because we were 10-3. And, <laughs> and, and we were 10-3 when we uh, demoted Sean Desire. <laughs> so, hey, why don't you go back to the GM box because you wasn't watching the Eagles. <laughs> All right, all right. And for Nick, Nick, oh, my God, this is going – all right. Nick, what the hell was going through your head as you saw this team losing to end the regular season on five out of six game losing streak? What was going through your head? And what could you have done if you had to go back? What could you have done and what game would you have done and stepped in to try to stop the bleeding? You're right, right? It's on me, right? You're yes. right. You no, know? I'm the head coach. <laughs> Everything goes back to me, right? You know, that means that I was not putting our guys in the right place, in the right position. We didn't do good as a whole staff. It was on what me. We, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I'm not going to let you give me a politician answer. Either. I need to know. As we was going on a five out of six game this this week, what the was going to be at the head coach, right. coach as, the captain, as the captain of this ship that was sinking? What lifeboat was you throwing out there to save the people on this ship? You saw us going on a five out of six game losing streak, and you did nothing. You didn't take over play calling, and you didn't cuss nobody out. You didn't say run the ball. What were you doing? Doing those five out of six game losing streak? Refs, I come out. Y'all see me on the sideline. I was very emotional and passionate. I cussed out some refs out there. So, but listen, it's like I said, it goes back to me. I, we planted seeds a couple of years ago. They bloomed already. So now I'm out there looking for new seeds to bring to our garden so we can bloom them again. Okay? The rebloom process. You know, there ain't no cloning going on here. It's reblooming going on here. And like you said, you're right. It is 100% my fault. And I and I, I let I let the whole city of Philly de- Philadelphia down, you know. It's sure ain't my fault. fault. Yeah, we know it's your fault. It's been your fault from week one, and when we was barely escaping, but we was winning. But anyway, but you know what we're gonna do? We can go back to work. 
and next year we're gonna come back better from this because we're gonna learn from our mistakes. <laughs> I learned from my mistake, okay? Yeah. And you know, me and Howie, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go get some new coordinators, and we're gonna come back bigger, stronger, and better from next year. Next All question. All right, let's go in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> he said, when would linebackers be a priority for the defense? After that one, Howie. Yo, this season, sit back and watch. We have plenty of cap space to either go out there and get a Devont, um, uh, um, a Devin White, Devontae David. Yo, there's plenty of linebackers out there that we could go out there. And after this tragedy that I've watched, that our linebackers was playing, ring around the roses, running to each other. Trust me, we're going to fix it. This draft and this free agency, I will get you a linebacker. TJ Edwards was a great player. You know, we, we tried to get him back. We couldn't get him back. But, you know, the Kobe Dean, we drafted early. He's going to be our star. We're still looking for him to come out and be the leader that he, we need him to be. You know, we have some young, young guys here. We love what we have in the house right now. We love all of them. They're great players. But we will do whatever it takes and utilize any resource possible to make sure we upgrade the position this offseason. Yeah, this offseason is like a linebacker offseason. A lot of teams been watching these playoffs. These linebackers been making a lot of plays. So these linebackers, hey, you know how every offseason is quarterback, wide receiver. This offseason is linebacker offseason. They're about to get paid. If you didn't believe in linebackers, woo, child. Name one that you want for sure. I want Patrick Queen, baby. Bring him from the Ravens. Is to the he um, a free agent, though? I think he is at the end of the season. Hmm. Remember, they're talking about let, trading him as a deadline because he was going to be a free agent next year. I thought we were going to get him then. But how was like, we just wait. I do better with the contracts later. All right. So yeah, I want Jeremiah Trotter Jr. in the draft for sure. Bring him. he be like his pops. Nina says, what happened to the locker room and why couldn't you fix it, Nick? I'll let you go. You be Nick this time. Now, I'll come back and I'll, I'll give you my example of Nick right after. So, well, let me see. What happened to the locker room and why you couldn't fix it, Nick? Well... Nothing happened in the locker room. What was going on was on the football field. The locker room was fine. We was always united. We win together. We lose together. It wasn't the locker room. It was the defensive scheme that I, I should have, you know, took more responsible, responsibility and fix it. Defensive scheme, the offensive scheme, it all was on me. I'm the head coach, and I should have fixed it. The locker room was strong. Not one time, as you know, we broke out in fight or people cussing each other in the locker room because that's not what we do. It was the field, on the field. What you saw was on the field, not in the locker room. We was always united in the locker room, but on the field, there was a lot of individuals. But I promise you, if y'all keep me as your head coach, we will be united both. On and off the field, everywhere you see us, we're going to be holding hands and saying kumbaya. <laughs> Nina, Nina, that's a very good question. I like that one. Wasn't ready for this one. That's a good question, Nina. First off, again, I will say it started with me. It starts with me. You know, I'm the head coach of this football team, right? Right? So when you hear things come out the locker room, you think, where was I at? when they were talking about these things, right? I might have been in the office. might have been in the press box. I might have been anywhere else, but I don't know these conversations you're talking about because I never heard them. You know, as a head coach, just for most of you, core values, baby. We got core values. Love each other. Have each other's back. <laughs> <laughs> Guide each other and be there for each other. Okay, we support each other throughout thinking then. And I would not say it was ever a locker room problem. I would say it was a me problem. Because I couldn't figure out what was going on in my locker room, right? That's oh, man. So don't blame none of these players out there. They love each other. They all love it. Flowers blooming everywhere. They love each other. 
They love all of each other. It was uh, me, but guess what? This offseason, I'm going to change that. I'm going to be back better. You don't have to worry about that. Next question. All right. All right. What happens to and Howie we trust? Hey, we, we still trust Howie. Hey, you know, I trust no, Howie. I trust Jeffrey Lurie. You know, I trust all these guys. You know? Oh, I like this question. You can do this one first. Boom. Howie, why is Nick still here, and why won't you hire an experienced coach? Nick, <laughs> rock, paper, or scissors? Well, well, that's a good question. But at the same time, it's an obvious question. Nick is still here because I want him here. Nick is still here because he made the playoffs all three seasons he was here. Nick is still here because he's one of two coaches in Eagles history that brought to the role his second year. Nick is still here because the players love to play for Nick. Nick is still here because he's a good motivator. Like, he takes the blame for everything. I'm the one that made him, you know, change defensive coordinator, but he didn't ever throw me under the bus. Nick is still here because he's he represents Philly to a T. He represents the fans. He's passionate, you know, and, you know, he argue with the refs. He cussing out other fans. For us, Nick is Philly. That's why he's still here. <laughs> Wait, what question? Why is he gone? Was he ever leaving? Were you leaving? Did you, did you knew something I didn't know? Because I didn't fire you yet. So if I didn't fire you, I don't know why anybody would thought. You know, I would have came out here and said something about a problem, Nick. You know what I'm saying? I would. You know, he would have been out the door. You know, why would you fire a guy that's been in the playoff three years in a row? Why would you fire a guy that has one of the best winning percentages of any Eagles coach ever? You know, it was a down season. You know, but I'm pretty confident Nick's going to take this new staff and they're going to go in there and they're going to find the details that were wrong with the players and the schemes that we had. And they're going to come back stronger this year. And this won't even be a question of why I kept Nick or not. Okay. What do you have to do here, Nick? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what did he say? He asked the question, what do you actually do here, Nick? Look, I'm tired of answering the same question. I do a lot here. I do a lot <laughs> of the things. I mean, have you not seen my before and after picture? Yo, I came here looking like I was 25. Right now, I look like I'm 55. All the gray hairs, you know, I have on my face, my head. Yo, there's plenty of nights I sleep. In the office, I don't go home after losses. I stay home. My little kids is it, actually for their papa. I'm over here in office, me trying to drop another loss for the following week. That's what I'm doing here. That's why I'm still here. I do the hard work behind the scenes. That's all you need to know. What do I actually do? You know, what I do, you can't quantify because it, as a head coach, it's a football team. It starts and ends with me, right? And I think y'all understand that by now, you know, because I want to make sure that y'all understand that it starts and ends with me. And what I do is I motivate the players, right? I keep them motivated. Give them speeches, flower speeches all the time. We talk about gardening on the weekends, okay? Okay? I talk to the head coaches. I mean, the assistant coaches. I talk to Howie. And we think game plans and, and ways that we can become a better team as a whole, as a unit. So, without what I do, none of the rest of the stuff could even happen. So, you know, but I like where your head's going with that question. Next question. Mm -hmm. 